Fire of Change. This is a this is a good tune, and, and because it has um, a reasonable number of chords in it, and there are some interesting chord changes, meaning it doesn't follow a predictable pattern. There are one or two things in there that are a little bit surprising, and uh, one of the into the introduction, but I'll come back to that. It's corded out for you on that chart that I made, so I'll, I'll come back to that intro part, but. What I thought um, would be interesting to do with this song for you uh, would be to work on your picking pattern. And this is new. We haven't talked about this yet. But what I'm going to basically do here is take these three fingers and make a, an imaginary pick. So the idea is that it frees up the thumb to bounce off the bass notes. Why would you want to do that? Well, because when you have a song like this with a lot of change, chord changes, uh, moves in it, you can work your way to the next chord by um, walking down the bass notes, and or walking up the bass notes. So, and essentially, if you're moving from a G chord to a C chord, uh, you can sort of hint that the C is coming by... Um, by moving your bass notes in advance. And uh, what that does is it, is it relaxes the listener's ear a little bit because they can anticipate where, they're, where you're going with it. And the surprises aren't so abrupt. And um, it, it, I think it works. Anyway, I think it's worth working on. So let me give an example of what I'm talking about here. First, let's talk about just the, the, the uh, walk down itself. So if I'm going to go from a G chord here, I'm going to go your G chord here. I'm going to go to a C. I might go. If I'm going to go to a D. I might go. And so as those chords move quickly, or you know, in time, it might go. Uh, for example, in this tune. the idea. Now the next part is a slight modification to um, what I showed you before on sort of down with the thumb and just brush with the fingernails of these two fingers. Could use with just one, but if you use two, it gives it a slightly different effect and one uh, one nail drags behind slightly behind the other, and I think it gives it a fuller sound. So, use this song to practice making those uh, those changes. So, if I was going to play through it straight, it might sound. And other than staying in the key, there's no hard or fast rule for how you move those bass notes. So that's the straight way. Here's the bouncy, uh, bass bouncy way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play some bass notes that lead into the next chords. different and so how do you know what bass notes to move well um, stay in the key stop that stay in the key and um, so if you're in a G there's your notes 
walking up to a C. You want to go to one F. You know, you want to go down to from a G to an E minor. It's really easy. That's all you got to do. Staying in the key. And what I mean by staying in the key is a Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. See how far it's a quick word on the introduction and the uh, and the outro, the intro and the outro. They do a pretty clever thing here. We're in the key of G. On the record, it's in the key of A. They just capo it it's on the second fret. That notwithstanding, we're in the key of G. So, how do they get the song started? They have a very clever intro. It's simple chords, but the chords you may not expect. It leads the ear in an interesting way. So they start with a C. Go to A7. And go to a D. On the last day of summer. So, and then they're into the song. I think it's pretty cool. So uh, there's a similar thing for the outro. Um, you have, uh, and on your notes section there, you'll see the little slant lines and then the chords. Uh, for the intro and the outro only. That's because in the absence of words, this is to indicate how many beats you stay on each chord. So when you see a slant line and then a chord, that chord's gonna live for the duration of four beats unless there's another chord in there. So if it's just G and then another slant line, you sit on G for four, sit on A7 for four. For example, here comes the, and they get to the outro from, um, the chorus, and I'm just going to play from the middle of the chorus, but just one in hundreds on the Allegheny Ridge, right? Here comes the uh, outro. And here it comes. called a two chord and they end on the six minor of the G that's the relative minor of the G which brings up one last thing and then I promise to shut the hell up but every major chord has a minor chord a relative minor chord every minor chord has a relative major chord I can explain all that later and when we talk about, particularly when we talk about the national notation system, and I'll explain that in a different uh, in a different sequence. But it's good to know about majors and uh, the relative minors. It just so happens that the key of, or the chord of G has a relative minor of E minor. Entire songs are written just behind the, the idea, the construct of uh, a song moving from a major chord to its relative minor chord in the back again. So in, in the case of C, relative minor is A minor. In the case of G, The idea being that if you're going to go between the relative minor, uh, the relative minor and its major form, uh, the best way to do that in most cases is to introduce the idea by moving into the chord with bass notes. And it's a good thing to practice. And this is a good song to practice it on. See how far you can get. <laughs>